God bless you, dear friends, and welcome to June 5th, 2022 weekly message. It is already halfway into the year 2022. I'm glad to have you on board today. You're listening to the last day's ministry from WGM Church. I hope you all had a blessed week. Many people misunderstand the gospel and some have never even heard of it. On today's podcast, we'll go in depth what the gospel of Christ truly is according to the scriptures. But before we start our main message, let us begin by hearing and believing the word of God from Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Main text today comes from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 8. New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through verse 8. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, and of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once. Of, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as one born out of due time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings and your word. We pray for the Holy Spirit to open our understanding of the scriptures as we hear your message today. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Apostle Paul delivered the most important message unto the saints in Corinth. It's a very important message to everyone in the world concerning the gospel of Christ. He testified that they were saved only by holding fast to this gospel and not believing it in vain. This is the gospel of Christ, which gives salvation to all who believe. It is very important to know that if we misunderstand what the word according to the scriptures means, we may be believing in vain, not receiving salvation. Even in the words of Jesus to his disciples after his resurrection, it is possible to realize what, according to the scriptures, mean. 
These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoves Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Luke 24, verse 44 through 46. Jesus said that he must die for our sins and rise from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. Not only that, but before his death, Jesus also spoke some very meaningful words to the Jews who did not believe in him. John 5, verse 39 through 42, he said this, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. Not only did he speak such terrifying words unto the unbelieving Jews because they failed to search the scriptures, but these words are also a warning to all the people in today's world who do not believe in Jesus. This means that all who do not believe in Jesus shall receive the coming Antichrist as the Messiah. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. John 5.43 The word according to the scriptures means that Jesus, the Christ, died for our sins as prophesied throughout the Old Testament. Then by examining the, examining the prophecies of Christ who died for our sins in the Old Testament, we can truly understand its meaning. The prophets Isaiah and Moses prophesied in detail about Christ who died for our sins. Isaiah said this, listen very carefully and see if you can figure out who Isaiah is talking about. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearer is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Isaiah 53, verse 1 through 10. Isaiah prophesied that Christ became a sin offering for all of us. Moses 
testified in detail about the five sacrifices throughout the book of Leviticus. Among the sacrifices, he testified in detail about the sin offering. When we realize what a sin offering is, we can realize the indescribable grace that our Lord Jesus Christ has given us. Through the book of Leviticus chapter 4, Moses testified that the Lord Jesus Christ bore all the sins that we committed, our lies, fornications, and all the sins that we committed through the body and mind. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin, which he hath sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head, and kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take off the bullock's blood, and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood, and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall take off from it all the fat of the bullock for the sin offering, the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver, and the kidneys, it shall be taken, it shall he take away, as it was taken off from the bullock of the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar of the burnt offering, and the skin of the bullock, and all his flesh, with his head, and with his leg, and his inwards, and his dung, even the whole bullock shall be carried forth, shall he carry forth without the camp unto the clean place, where the ashes are poured out, and burn him on the wood with fire, where the ashes are poured out, shall he be burnt. Leviticus 4, verses 1 through 12. Oof, I don't know about you, but I can almost taste and smell the blood and smoke of the inwards, the innards of the animals listed in the verses. Imagine killing an animal every time you broke the Mosaic Law. Not only that, he commanded that the whole congregation of Israel must offer a sin offering to be forgiven of their sin even every time they sinned. Same thing goes for even the ruler if he did something wrong out of ignorance. And the same rules applied even to the common folks when they sinned. A never-ending bloodbath and burning of beasts for the, sin, for the sins of men and women of Israel. Jesus Christ was given by God the Father as a sin offering for the atonement of the sins of all the people of the world. When Jesus was crucified and cried out to the God the Father, it was a cry towards the Father God who had given him up as a sin offering for the people of the world. In Matthew 27 verse 46, In about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Apostle Paul testified that we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. He also said, For by one offering he hath perfected and sanctified them forever. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. But the blood of Christ has the power to perch our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Jesus was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. If we search the Old Testament, there are references to the third day 
it is neither the second or the fourth day. So we need to understand why Apostle Paul and Jesus said when they focused on the third day. God told Moses about the third day in Exodus 19, verse 10 and 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. The prophet Hosea also prophesied about the third day. Hosea 5, 15 through 6, verse 2. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction they will seek me early. Come, and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. On the third day, Jesus attended the wedding ceremony in Cana and performed the first miracle of turning water into wine. And when Mary said that she was short of wine, Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. The third day in the Bible spiritually refers to the third millennium, 2,000 years from the first coming of Jesus Christ. In other words, there will be a rapture after two days. And on the third day, there will be a wedding in heaven. And at the coming of the third millennium, there will be a manifestation of the kingdom of Jesus Christ here on earth. You know, Apostle Peter did say this in 2 Peter 3.8, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. In Matthew chapter 17, six days later, Jesus showed his disciples about his kingdom through his glorious appearance at the Mount of Transfiguration. It was a reference to the scene of his glorious establishment of the millennial kingdom on the seventh day, which is after the sixth day since Adam, 6,000 years since Adam, which is also on the third day after he had accomplished, after Jesus accomplished salvation on the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, according to the scriptures. Again, Jesus will return soon. He will come for his church first. That's the rapture the chaste bride of Christ before he allows the great tribulation to start on earth. He will then return on his second coming with the church to destroy the unbelieving world. He will then set up and rule his millennial kingdom here on earth. He invites everyone into his kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Admit you're a sinner and repent for not believing in the blood shed by Jesus, and believe in this gospel, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You must repent and believe the gospel with all your heart. Pray for wisdom and understanding of the Holy Bible as you study, and let Jesus lead you in truth and spirit. Jesus is waiting for you even today. The day of salvation is now and today. Thank you for joining today. God bless and have a wonderful day.